Welcome to another course of HR Analytics. It's going to be an online course uh, consisting of several lectures. So this is going to be our first lecture. Let's start. Uh, first, we are going to discuss how we are going to go about this course. So you can say the teaching methodology of this course. So there are going to be three things. We'll start with the topic understanding. And then we will perform the analytics using Excel. And then we will take the decision based on our analysis. So these three things are important in this order because uh, if you don't understand the topic or the concept, it is not going to be possible for you to do the analysis. And why do we do analysis is to make certain HR related decisions. So this is how we are going to go about in this course. So all these three things are going to be important. Why we are using Excel is because this is a software which is readily available and it is available to most of the people throughout the world. What I'll do is that whatever we'll be uh, performing in the part of analytics, I'll share this Excel file in the description and then you can download this file and you can use it for your uh, analytics. So let's just look at this data and see what kind of uh, data we will be using. So this is going to be our data sheet that we will be using throughout this course. Uh, let's suppose this is uh, about human resource planning and we will be using this example. And then we will move towards skill inventory, then we have the trend analysis and then we have the FTE correlations, regression analysis, vacancy analysis, ratio analysis and many other type of analysis that we'll be using in our uh, HR analytics course. So we'll come back to these sheets uh, in about one or two lectures. First we'll understand what is HR analytics and why do we have to perform it. So this is going to be our methodology and let's just discuss why do we need HR analytics? Because we are already, some people think that we are already doing fine with HR without any analytics because this is some kind of new phenomena um, in organizations. So why can't we do without HR analytics? So let's look at this example and do this exercise with me so you can understand why analytics is important. Now, the exercise or the example is that we have to select a teacher for nursery or a Montessori class. So what we'll do is we'll be looking at about six CVs, six CVs, and out of those six CVs, you will have to select two CVs that you think are suitable for the candidate of a Montessori teacher. So let's just look at each CV carefully. This is the first CV. Now you have the person here, you have the name, you have the education, the experience, age and gender. So this is, you can say that this is the data that is available to you to uh, shortlist or hire two people for Montessori class. So this is our first CV. Uh, you can pause it and watch it fully. And then let's look at another one. This is the second candidate or second applicant. This is a third applicant. The fourth one. The fifth one. And the sixth one. So these are six of the CVs that you can look. And what you can do is you can just uh, shortlist two people from here that you personally think are the best for Montessori teacher. So whenever I have conducted this uh, experiment in the classes and with many people, the results that we get, not it's, it never happened that all the people are selecting the exactly two people. So if you look at these six CVs in this page, so what you will see is that they have the same data when it comes to their education, their experience, their age, it is the same except uh, 
there are three female candidates and there are three male candidates. So that's the only difference. Or maybe their appearance or something else. But if you look at the data, it is the same for everybody. Maybe the names have been written somewhere above the picture, somewhere uh, below the picture. Some names are slanted. So that's the only difference. So the problem and why do we need analytics should be very clear now that you can just uh, take two of your shortlisted CVs and then see the problem. Now, if we see all the candidates, they have the same knowledge, skill, and abilities. No one is different from the other, objectively speaking. Which means, if you look at the data, nobody is different from the other person, except the gender, yes. But the need of analytics come because as human beings, at times, we miss the objective assessment and we have some biases or we go to do subjective assessment, which is based on things which are not objective or things which are not based on uh, tangible quantitative evidence-based data. So the problem is, without knowing, we make some kind of biases or errors in our decision-making even when we are using the same data. And what actually uh, happens is that we go with a bad decision of HR. I'm not saying that HR analytics is always going to give you the best decision, but wherever data will be applied, you need to apply a certain type of analytics. Otherwise, if you just leave it to human beings, they will make bad decisions. So that is, you can say, the need of the HR analytics uh, that we are going to discuss in our lectures. Now, let's discuss or define the HR analytics. There might be many definitions, but this is the simplest and the easiest to understand. HR analytics is the process, so it's a process. We will talk about how this process uh, is done in our second lecture. So it's a process of acting and analyzing human resources related data in order to improve organizational decision making. So a few things are important. First of all, it is going to be a process and process of collecting data, analyzing it. But the main reason is going to be improved decision making. Now, the HR analytics is referred to uh, different terms with slightly different meanings. It is referred to as talent analytics when we will talk about some strategic part of the uh, analytics that is usually related to talent analytics. People analytics, but these are the people who are working at organizations, so people sometimes call it people analytics or even sometimes workforce analytics. So these are the different names that you can give to HR analytics. Now let's just discuss that why it is needed. So most organizations are already doing fine without any analytics. But the problem is that these organizations, they have a lot of data. Some of them do not have any data, but most of them have a lot of data that they routinely are collecting. For example, how many people are absent, how many people are present, how many uh, people are working, what kind of people you hire, how much time does it take to hire people. So all that data is available in some, some form. But the problem is that there is no specialized form of analytics that is applied to that data. So the organizations, they, they do not have this idea why their absenteeism is increasing, why their turnover is increasing, why people are not performing, why their trainings are not working as uh, perceived. So that's the problem. They have the data, but they do not use it for any uh, meaningful insight. So can HR not simply look at the data they already have? They can, but the problem is, the raw data does not give you any useful insight because if you look at the raw data, it is just as you're looking at a large 
spreadsheet like an Excel sheet or SPSS sheet or any other sheet which is full of numbers and words. They don't make any sense. You can't make any decision based on that data unless you analyze it. So without organizing or the direction of the uh, data or data analytics, it does not give you any meaning. It appears to be meaningless. Now here we can also do the difference between data and information. Data is a raw form of numbers or words, but when we convert it, do the analytics, we convert it into some kind of information. When you apply certain tests, certain algorithms, certain mathematical formulas, the, the idea is that you are converting raw data into information. And information is something that you can use for decision making. But raw data cannot be used for a good decision making uh, when it comes to people or HR analytics. Now, uh, once you have organized, compared, analyzed the raw data, it provides you useful insight. Yes, what insight can it provide? Uh, these are a few examples. For example, what patterns can be revealed in employee turnover? Why people are leaving? How long does it take to hire an employee or hire number of employees? What amount of investment is needed to get the employees to fully productive speed, which means their development and training? Which of our employees are most likely to leave within a year? And are learning and development initiatives having an impact on employee performance? So these and in addition to these, many other questions can be easily answered if you have the right data and you can uh, apply the right analytics. Now let's just look at the pros and cons of uh, HR analytics. We'll discuss a few things. So first of all, pros. Good things about HR analytics. It provides you more accurate decision making uh, criteria which reduces the need for organizations to rely on intuition or guesswork, which we just talked about when we were selecting the CVs. So intuition, biases, guesswork is reduced when you use uh, HR analytics. Secondly, it also gives you strategies to improve retention. For example, if there's a problem of retention of employees, you can do certain analysis and then you can know that how and when and why you can retain people and why people leave the organization. Based on certain analyses, you can also uh, improve your hiring and recruitment practices. We will talk about these practices. And then obviously you will be able to see the trends and patterns of uh, HR data. At the same time, we also have some problems or some issues with HR analytics or cons of HR analytics. Uh, many HR departments currently lack the statistical and analytical skill set. The HR managers sometimes are good. They have a lot of knowledge about HR and the functional area. But when it comes to data analysis, they lack these skill sets, which is why they cannot perform the HR analytics. That's, that's a problem. Different management and reporting systems. For example, if one company is using multiple HRISs, somebody is managing data on one uh, HRIS, the other person or other department is managing data on some other sheet or something. So that's a problem because then you cannot aggregate and compare the data. Uh, one more thing which is going to be a problem when it comes to HR analytics is the quality of data. It is very important how and what kind of data you are collecting. Garbage in, garbage out uh, can be the right words. So quality of data is also an issue. And then organizations also need access to good quality analytics and reporting softwares that can utilize the data which is collected by the HR people. Sometimes you have a very good uh, collection of data system. But the problem is when it to reporting for example making graphs making tables coming up with answers so you don't have those expertise or sometimes you don't have those good softwares some more things 
is the ethical issues, for example, because if you're using data related to employees, employees are people and they have their data, they have their personal lives, maybe you have their medical records, maybe you have their absenteeism record, maybe you have their behavioral issue records, that can lead to some ethical issues. So whenever you are analyzing the data, you need to be very careful about these ethical issues. And then uh, the, the problem is that people who are analyzing that data should be good in analytics because it is what kind of questions you are asking from the data. If you're using any software, let's say Excel or SPSS or Stata or any other software for analytics, the problem is that uh, if you do not know what to find and how to find it, and what kind of questions you're asking from the data, what kind of algorithms you are applying, that can lead to uh, poor outcomes. So it's not going to be helpful. In fact, it is going to give you or lead you towards bad decision making. Now, this is going to be end of our first lecture. In the lecture two, we will talk about the process of HR analytics that we talked about in the definition of HR analytics. So how this process uh, works, what are the four steps? The four steps, we can call them SEMA or CMAA. We will talk about this in the second lecture. Thank you very much for now.